Historic postcard images used in this exhibit are from the permanent collection housed in the Pike Research Center at the Bayfield Heritage Association. All images used are turn of the 20th century vintage. The narrative accompanying the exhibit is taken from an 1895 newspaper article written by Sam Fifield entitled Beautiful Isles of the Shawamigan. Lieutenant Governor Sam Fifield was a Wisconsin politician, influential newspaper businessman, and proprietor of the Old Shawamigan Hotel in Ashland. In addition to starting both the Bayfield Press and the Ashland Press with his brother Hank, Fifield diligently promoted business ventures and tourism interests in the greater Shawamigan Bay and Apostle Islands area. In 1886, his vision for sufferers of hay fever resulted in the establishment of a pure air paradise where he opened Camp Stella on Sand Island where he brought tourists and dignitaries for nearly 20 years. The complete text of Sam Fifield's narrative, along with his 1915 obituary notice, can be found by following the link to the BHA website at the end of this presentation. And now, the narrative of Beautiful Isles of the Shawamigan by Sam Fifield. Along the south shore of the Great Northern Sea, the scenery, while of entirely different mold, is no less interesting and pleasing than that of the bold shores of the north. From Duluth to the Sault Ste. Marie, there is a great variety, from the peaceful isles of the Shawamigan to the rugged cliffs of the pictured rocks. But of all the charming spots that gladdens the eye and heart, there are none that equal the magical islands of the Apostle group. How lovely they are, reflecting their brilliant foliage in the glistening waters that kiss their brownstone shores. It is a wonderful panorama that unrolls as one sails along the green shores with their beautiful bays and inlets, nature's flower-decked parks swept and trimmed by the summer gales. They are mostly rock-bottomed, their foundations being old Potsdam sandstone of the age of trilobites, which geologists claim to be the first evidence of life on the globe. If their theory is correct, then our isles are as old as life itself in any form in this great mysterious world of ours. In these sandstone layers, there are wonderful caverns shaped by the ceaseless waves that during centuries have carved them into magnificent grottos and halls, connected and supported by grand arches and columns, requiring but a slight stretch of the imagination to transform into the ruins of some of the grand old cathedrals of the old world. Almost every island has its own peculiarity, its bit of romance, or its own curiosity to exhibit. Sailing among them, they bear a considerable likeness to each other, but close inspection dissolves the illusion, for they differ materially. Some of these nature pictures are grand beyond conception, especially the group along the northeast face of Devil's Island, the outer sentinel to the north where a bright light at night guides the sailor on his way. In every large family, there is always some particular one selected as the beauty, and so it is with the apostles. Wilson Island is the beauty of the family, a snug, brownstone-bottomed, oval and oblong island with a bouquet of evergreen and hardwood forests crowning its banks. It is the east and northeast end of Grand Presque Isle that gives it prominence. There is a most wonderful collection of natural curiosities. For nearly four miles, the shore presents a wall of solid brownstone cut and carved into fantastic shapes with caves and grottos, arches and columns, and wide rifts into which the sea rushes like a maelstrom during stormy weather, the roar of which can be heard miles away. No pen can describe this wonderful scenery. It is simply grand and beautiful. Trip Hammer Point, an immense brownstone trip hammer. Lone Rock, a beautifully molded islet nestled in a charming little cove. The Sphinx, a wonderful stone photograph of the Egyptian original. The Anvil and the Hammer of Thor, which guards the entrance to Split Rock. A deep chasm, 190 feet deep, with perpendicular walls 50 feet high into which a good-sized yacht can be run and completely hidden. 
together with hundreds of beautiful points, all of great interest to visitors. This upheaval of sandstone is undoubtedly the greatest on the South Shore, certainly the most interesting. One has not seen the wonderland of the islands if Presque Isle has been passed by. Bass Island has its natural curiosity to present in Profile Rock, located near the north end, a most striking and interesting feature. Sand Island possesses many treasures in the way of natural art. On the extreme western point is Grand Arch, a most wonderful structure. It has been photographed and painted by artists of high and low degree and is quite familiar. Bierstadt, the great American landscape painter who visited the islands in 1878, was so pleased with it that he sketched it and afterward it formed the subject of one of his little landscape gems. In East Bay is perhaps the most wonderful piece of natural rock work to be found on the coast, Temple Gate. This structure rises out of the water 35 feet high in the form of an arch, through the center of which extends a cross piece of stone. To crown the hole on the top nearly over the center of the arch, the bleak and barkless trunk of a pine tree fully 30 feet in length stands as a signal staff. A cruise among them for a few days even, and one becomes enchanted with their romantic beauty. And then there is such a variety in their wonderful formation that one never tires of their society. They seem to welcome one with their sheltering arms, safe harbors in all weather for all craft that visit them. 2020 marks the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. Apostle Islands area residents, businesses, and visitors celebrate this special place on Lake Superior and its significance to our culture. Wisconsin's Apostle Islands National Lakeshore includes 21 islands in Lake Superior and a 12-mile long strip of mainland shoreline. The area features pristine stretches of sand beaches, spectacular sea caves, remnant old growth forests, a diverse population of birds, mammals, and fish, and the largest collection of National Register lighthouse complexes in the National Park System. People have used the islands for thousands of years, and the area is considered the ancestral homeland of the Ojibwe people. The park annually hosts about 200,000 visitors, Everyone is invited to learn about the Apostle Island's past and how you can be a part of its future protection by visiting the sites shown here. For more information, as well as a link to this presentation and many other online resources, please visit bayfieldheritage.org. If you enjoyed this presentation, please consider making a gift to the Bayfield Heritage Association. You can donate securely online at bayfieldheritage.org support.